Hey, what's up guys? Christian here from Vehicle Virals. I thought I'd do something different today uh, with this video. I'm gonna be talking about my own personal vehicle, the 2008 BMW 335i. We're gonna be talking about some of the reliability issues and some problems you might encounter. In fact, any of the N54 engine variants. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the 2008 BMW 335i. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure and subscribe for weekly automotive content. Let's go ahead and hop in the car and begin this video. All right guys, so the first problem you might encounter with the N54 engines, similar to the ones in my car, the 2008 335i, uh, is the high pressure fuel pump. That's probably one of the most common issues that happen in the BMW. The high pressure fuel pump is responsible for injecting fuel into the engine. If the fuel pump fails, then your engine won't get the proper fuel uh, for it to run properly. It's a very common issue among the N54 engine uh, BMWs. There's some good news and there's some bad news associated with the high pressure fuel pump if it were ever to fail on you. Let's go ahead and start with the good news. So BMW acknowledged that it did have a faulty high pressure fuel pump that prematurely fails. So they decided to recall the part. They also extended the warranty once they recalled it. Um, the warranty for the high pressure fuel pump is up to 120,000 miles and 10 years. With a quick thought, you might think, man, that's a great deal. Car's covered for a while. So if you had a car that's within the 10 years and the 120,000 mile warranty and your high pressure fuel pump was to give up, well, guess what? You're covered. You can pop into any BMW dealer and get that fixed at no cost. So this is where the bad news is. Let's say you were to buy a 2007 BMW 335i, you're pretty much outside of that window. Assuming that the recall hasn't been done on that car yet, and it just happens to fail when you purchase it, then you're You're pretty much already outside of the window for the recall, so they won't replace it if it fails at that point. This is the thing, with my observation, I've noticed that most people that do own BMW 335i's, their high pressure fuel pump was already you know, replaced back in the early stages at 20, 30,000 miles. So if you were to find one right now, let's say with higher mileage, there's a very big chance that that recall has already been done on the high pressure fuel pump. So it shouldn't be that big of an issue. The price for the high pressure fuel pump is around 450 bucks. And that's not even including the labor, ouch. But like I said, it's very rare to find a BMW that already hasn't had that part service in the past because of the recall um, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue so how do you know if your high pressure fuel pump is bad here are some symptoms long cranking when you try to start the car let's say it takes five six or seven seconds to start the car that might be because of a faulty high pressure fuel pump also your car can shake let's say you're just driving normally and your car just starts to shake and it starts to lose power um, in my case when I went through this um, I would try to floor the gas and it just wouldn't go anywhere. The car would just shake the more I floored it. Um, the car goes into like this limp mode, this safety mode that it's trying to protect itself from further damage in itself. Um, that can be a symptom as well. So yeah, if you experience any of that, uh, it could be that your high pressure fuel pump is bad. The next problems experienced with the 335i is the electric water pump. The electric water pump, which is another fragile part, is responsible for uh, pumping water or coolant into the radiator in order to cool the engine down. Both the water pump and the radiator are very important parts to your cooling system. From others that I've talked to, their water pump gave out around, let's say 70 or 80,000 miles. Um, my personal experience, my water pump gave out at around 61,000 miles. I remember paying almost a thousand dollars to get it fixed. Obviously not going to the dealer. The dealer would probably cost me 14, 1500 dollars to get it changed including parts and labor um, I went over to like this European shop and they charged me close to a thousand dollars to to repair that but what happens is when you replace the water pump on one of these cars you have to also replace the thermostat um, and that's where the added cost comes in uh, some symptoms that you might get to know that your water pump is bad uh, your car starts to overheat if you look at the temperature meter that's on the cluster there 
typically anything over 250 degrees Fahrenheit um, is, is not normal. So I would definitely uh, get it looked at. Uh, another symptom is that your car gets into like this lint mode. Like I said previously, you lose power, it slows down. You also get a warning light that tells you about your temperature as well. I remember when I first went through it, uh, my car just decided to just lose all of its power. And then I had the warning that I was reaching unsafe temperatures and then the car shut down. And it does that, like, like I said before, it does that to protect itself. There's really no shortcut to fix this problem. You just have to buy the part, make sure you buy the OEM part. Don't take any shortcuts when it comes to this particular issue. Uh, so the third problem you might experience with the 335i that is pretty common as well is oil leaks from the valve cover. There's two reasons why your valve cover can be leaking. It can be either the gasket or the cover itself. When it comes to the gasket, they're, they're prone to degrading pretty fast. And the valve cover is made out of plastic, which is very prone to cracking because of the high heats that the turbo engines produce. So the biggest issue here with that problem is that you don't get any fault codes or any kind of warnings that you are leaking oil from your valve cover. Um, that's one of the things where you would kind of have to observe it some of the symptoms you might get from the oil leak from the valve cover is uh, uh, the, maybe a, a possible uh, burning oil smell coming from the engine bay. Um, also, you might get a warning that you're low on oil, depending on how much is leaking, if it's leaking a lot or a little bit at a time. If it's the gasket, it's not too bad of an issue. It's only $32 to replace. But if it's the cover, you could only imagine how expensive that can get. And if you change the cover, you're gonna have to change the gasket as well. So I think if you get the combo for both the gasket and the cover, you're paying anywhere around 450 bucks. Woo! And that does not include the labor. So the fourth and last common problem you might experience with a BMW 335i with the N54 engine is, is probably the worst one on this list. And by worst, I mean it's the most expensive one to repair and that is turbocharger failure and Westgate rattle. And typically when you have this issue, it requires you to get two brand new turbos. So the function of the Westgate is to, is to control the maximum boost uh, created by the turbos to protect both the engine and the turbochargers. Some of the symptoms you might get is you'll hear rattling coming from the, from the engine, almost like something inside of a tin can, especially when you hit the gas and rev. You'll get loss of power, so you'll be able to tell that your performance is not as optimal as what it normally is, aka limp mode. You might even get smoke coming from the exhaust because you got oil leaking from the turbo seals. I'll tell you this, if this issue were to happen to you, it's almost just better to get brand new turbos, um, upgraded turbos, not the OEM ones. You're already gonna be spending over a thousand dollars for the turbos and it's ridiculously expensive to, to, for the labor. I think it takes anywhere around 16 hours to replace those turbos. So if you're gonna go ahead and spend that, you might as well pay an extra, a little extra and get some aftermarket uh, bigger turbos, get some performance out of it. Anyways, guys, that was the video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys found it informative. If you did, hit the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I'm thinking of reviewing this specific car. I wanna get into car reviews in general, and I think I'll start with this car. So if you don't wanna miss that, hit the subscribe button. Don't let this list make you not want to buy this car. This is just worst case scenario. And if you did have to change these parts, um, you wouldn't have to change them again for a very long time. In my scenario, I've owned it for three years. The positive outweigh the negatives, in my opinion. Hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. Till next time.